videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Is there any mainstream American political commentator quite as controversial as Tucker Carlson? This former CNN and MSNBC newscaster made a giant splash in the industry when he signed on with Fox News back in 2009. Since then, he's only become even more notorious after taking the reins of that network's flagship time slot with his popular series Tucker Carlson Tonight in 2016. Shortly after entrenching himself as one of the right wing's most popular, in 2011, Tucker and his wife Susan would trade down from the $4 million home they were living in at the time in the Washington DC district of Kent for a property worth half as much located less than a mile away in the same neighborhood. The couple's original home was a six bedroom, eight bath colonial that boasted a heated pool, six fireplaces, and its very own in-law suite. Carlson's traded that in for a multi-level colonial style brick house that was originally built in 1941, boasting seven bedrooms as well as five and a half bathrooms with a price tag of $2 million. Situated along the Potomac River in the Palisades section of DC, this second home was renovated during Tucker's ownership and updated with a brand new kitchen that opens up to a spacious den. Throughout its more than 4,700 square feet, other standout spaces are said to include a large living room, a formal dining room, and a relaxing sunroom, along with a well-manicured front lawn, as well as a flagstone walkway flanked on either side by some large shrubs. Rubs. After living here for about six years, Tucker and his wife listed the property in 2017 and wound up selling it for just over $2 million. Afterwards, the conservative TV host and his wife bought a new home about a mile away once again. And this one was also situated in the neighborhood of Kent. I guess the Carlsons just can't seem to get enough of this neighborhood, at least until what happened next. In July 2017, Tucker Carlson dropped $3.895 million on a much newer Kent neighborhood house that was originally built in 1998. Considerably larger than either of his previous two homes in the area, this new property plopped in at about 7,400 square feet of space and included five bedrooms, go along with six and a half bathrooms. Built by Jim Gibson Builders, further notable features inside this residence are said to include multiple formal entertaining spaces that boast 10 foot high ceilings. There's also a gorgeous kitchen arranged around a large island that features high end gourmet appliances. This culinary space flows seamlessly into the home's less formal dining area and family room, the latter of which features a raised hearthstone fireplace and glass doors that lead to the backyard. Downstairs, a finished basement includes a family room as well as a staff quarters that can double as a guest room or a gym in a pinch. Upstairs on the top floor, you'll discover four ensuite guest bedrooms plus the primary suite complete with vaulted ceilings, two walk-in closets, and plenty of space in the bathroom. More or less the ideal place to raise a family, right? And it was for a time. Then in late 2018, a group of about 20 anti-fascist protesters gathered in front of Tucker's home in a very aggressive protest that was eventually broken up by police and condemned by Carlson supporters and detractors alike. A mob gathered outside of Tucker's home just two hours before he was set to go live in his 8 p.m. time slot. When he learned what was happening, Tucker called his wife who was hiding out in the kitchen after hearing someone screaming from outside the front of their home and pounding on the door is so hard that they actually cracked it. Thinking that she was experiencing a home invasion, Susan called the police and locked herself in the pantry. Thankfully, none of the couple's four children were home at the time. According to now deleted social media posts shared by Smash Racism DC, this local anti-fascist organization showed up outside of Tucker's home with a very clear message for him. We know where you sleep. We know where you sleep at night. A few minutes later, the police arrived and broke the whole thing up, sticking around for hours afterwards to make sure that it was truly finished. And while Tucker and his family might love the neighborhood of Trent, having spent more than a decade there, this became the event that pushed them out for good. 
Three years later, he let the place go for $3.95 million, or roughly $100,000 more than what he originally paid for it. Then he and his family set their sights far away from Washington, D.C., and made their escape to Florida. In early 2020, just as the pandemic began changing all of our lives, Tucker Carlson's family found a new home for $2.9 million on Gasparilla Island in the state of Florida. There, Tucker purchased a late 1960s era residence that online resources indicate is roughly 3,000 square feet. The single level dwelling was designed by modernist architect Ralph Twitchell and boasts some elegant features including terrazzo flooring as well as plenty of cypress wood paneling. Better yet, the main house spills onto a lushly planted courtyard dining terrace where Tucker can enjoy that year long Florida weather. You know, whenever it's not threatening to totally upend his home with something as pesky as a hurricane. All in all, the property is set to include three bedrooms to go along with three and a half bathrooms, with the poolside guest house adding on an additional one of each. That might make this a much smaller place than what the Carlsons have become accustomed to over the past few years, but on the plus side of things for their family, Florida is one of the most conservative states in the entire country, so the likelihood of a repeat of what happened outside his former house in Washington is slim to none. All right, everyone, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for watching today's video. And before leaving, consider answering the following question. Have you ever considered moving homes but staying in the exact same neighborhood and why? Let me know if you think there's a point in even doing something like that in the first place in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat and be sure to stay tuned to what's coming up next. A look into the multiple multiple homes of Anderson Cooper. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all on the next tour. Bye. Media personality Anderson Cooper has created a stellar career for himself as one of the world's most trusted reporters. Hailing from a successful family of artists based out of New York City, in his younger days, Cooper spent time in countries like Kenya and Vietnam while studying to become a member of the CIA, but he ultimately decided to shift his focus to journalism. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. After establishing himself as one of the preeminent forces in his industry, Anderson would carve out a beautiful life for himself in his native city of New York by securing one of the city's most unusual and unique homes. Anderson Cooper doesn't just live anywhere in the Big Apple, instead he lives inside of a converted firehouse. Originally constructed in 1906 and located in the heart of Greenwich Village, Anderson paid $4.3 million for this building in January 2010. Boasting four floors, a gorgeous turn of the century brick facade, and more than 8,200 square feet of space, Anderson wasted no time totally reshaping this building from the inside out. Whereas at one point this building looked every inch of what you'd expect from a big city firehouse full of red and yellow paint, when Anderson and his now ex-partner Benjamin Mazzani first moved in here, they ripped all that down to bring attention to the original stone and brick as well as terracotta details. But the Emmy winners stopped short of ridding the home for all of its former utility. For instance, Anderson decided to keep the fire pole as well as the original spiral staircases and all the exposed brick throughout. The thing about this place is that images of the interior are often hard to come by. We're pretty much kept to what Anderson has chosen to share with us on social media. For instance, one of the areas of his home that he's been excited to show off is his historically accurate early 20th century gym setup styled after equipment that would have been used by actual firefighters back around the time that this building was first constructed. Soon after making the purchase, Anderson would gush about it to USA Today in 2011, telling them, I just bought the old kind of weights with big large balls on the ends. Back then there were gymnasiums, climbing ropes in the ceiling, it's an old fire house, so I want to keep the old fireman's gym. Another area of the home that Anderson has been keen to reveal is his son Wyatt's nursery. Wyatt was born in April 2020 and as soon as he was on his way, Anderson had one of the rooms in this home converted specifically for his use. 
I mean, it's a pretty adorable setup, to be honest, with baby blue wallpaper and several fluffy stuffed animals, one of which has special significance to Anderson, a Snoopy doll with a connection to his late brother Carter. He explained to People Magazine, This is my Snoopy and I loved him so much, I used to hold him by his neck all the time, so his neck's kind of loose. And he's actually wearing a t-shirt that belonged to my brother. I remember at the time, I was worried that Snoopy was cold, so I asked my brother for a t-shirt and I cut it to fit. As adorable as that area of his home is, one section that might be a little less so is Anderson's library, which according to him, might very well be haunted. Hey, no place is perfect, right? Other photos that he shared online suggest that Cooper's home contains decor such as a bunch of colorful rugs that Anderson's dog Lily loves to lounge around at on all times. And this place is full of gorgeous historical antiques that turn it into the closest thing possible to living in a New York City museum. But the best look we've ever had of the inside of Anderson's pad came from 2015 H&M commercial that he filmed in the comfort of his home alongside David Beckham and Kevin Hart. Not only do we get to glimpse at his spacious living room, bedroom, and rooftop, we also get to see the stars utilizing that historical gym setup firsthand. But if you think Anderson Cooper's New York City home is special, just wait until you get a load of his summer getaway. During a romantic vacation to Brazil in 2013, Anderson Cooper fell in love with the town of Trancoso, located in the state of Bahia, on the Atlantic coast. So much so that he decided to build a home there. One that would soon be known locally as Casa Anderson. The village is about a 14 hour journey involving both a plane and a lengthy car ride from his home base in New York City. But according to Cooper, it's worth every minute of the trip. He once told Architectural Digest about the immediate impact this town had on him. Within a day, I was fantasizing about buying a house there. To immerse himself in the native lifestyle, Cooper found the perfect designer, local real estate expert Wilbert Doss. At the time, Doss had already been living in Brazil for seven years after resigning from his role as creative director for the clothing brand Diesel. With Doss's assistance, Cooper secured one of the area's vacant lots, a long strip of land dotted with a lush assortment of mango, jackfruit, and banana trees. The two then devised the compound of four pavilions set along a path that begins on the border of the town square and ends in a stunning stretch of rainforest. The first cottage is colonial in style and contains the home's conjoined living and dining rooms, as well as the kitchen and a veranda for enjoying outdoor dining. Two center buildings act as guest bungalows, one made of brick, the other of wattle and daub, a process in which clay is layered over a wood frame. The last structure is tucked away near the pool, and it's a two-story treehouse composed of reclaimed timber planks that holds the master suite above, as well well as an outdoor living room and bar below. As for the decor, it's a mix of vintage finds, items from Doss's home design collection, and pieces crafted by local artisans, all of which reflect Anderson's love for authentic furnishings tied to the rich tradition of the region. The one downside is that with the trip being as long as it is, Anderson doesn't get to visit nearly as often as he'd like. But that doesn't mean he doesn't keep a little bit of this special place with him wherever he goes. He told Architectural Digest, In my New York office, I keep a picture which I find very meditative and calming. Just knowing that my house exists makes me happy. Well, lucky for him, he's got more options than just his summer getaway because Anderson Cooper also owns a charming retreat in Connecticut. In 2014, Anderson Cooper bought his biggest home of all, a massive 10,127 square foot Tudor Revival, originally built in 1910 for an estimated price price of around five to nine million dollars. Originally designed by Wilson Ear, the founder of Housing Garden, this three-story building, historically known as the Rye House, is located in the plush suburban town of Bantam, an area home to many big-time celebs like Oscar winner Meryl Streep as well as a whole bunch of others. Here, Anderson's estate is situated on 48.9 acres of land that includes Japanese gardens, lush landscaping, scenic biking and hiking trails, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, and access to Bantam Lake as well as Lake Waramog. So yeah, if you're looking for outdoor adventure, this place has it all. When it comes to the interior, this is not only Anderson's biggest home, but perhaps his most extravagant, boasting fully restored fir and oak flooring throughout, nine hand-carved limestone fireplaces, and a marble staircase. 
What's more, the mansion contains 10 bedrooms, six bathrooms, three powder rooms, as well as a den and office suite alongside a 28 foot long dining room, as well as a 39 foot long living room. There's also a spacious kitchen, which as you might imagine is equipped more like a five star restaurant than a private culinary space. And if all of that isn't enough as an added bonus, the property also features an additional four bedroom guest house on the premises. It's unclear exactly how much time Anderson spends here, but considering it's much closer than the 14 hours it takes to get to his summer retreat, something tells me that he vacations here more often than he does in Brazil. Either way, the man has choices. And when there are options like these, what more could you want? All right, everyone, that's gonna bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks for watching today's episode, and before you leave, consider answering the following question. If it took the better part of a day to travel to your summer getaway, would you consider the destination worth the trip? Let me know if you have the patience, Anderson Cooper clearly does in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to never miss a video. My name is Kara, follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another one. Bye.